welcome to this session. My name is Vadubur Bhargavan. I go by VB. I'm on dot CEO, and it is a pleasure to uh, have the opportunity to speak to you all on the considerations for a modern digital first card. So we have just uh, shy of 20 minutes. So I will try to keep a brisk pace. And uh, if there are questions, please do pipe them in and we'll make sure that we answer the questions after the session. So thanks again for attending uh, bright and early this morning. So I'm gonna get started. So really the topic here is uh, considerations for a modern digital first card. And I think uh, it is fair to say that we are in unprecedented times. Something's very different about what's going on in the payment card industry today. Uh, the pace of innovation and choices for consumers has just picked up dramatically. And new tech is really disrupting the payments card business. So you had Apple announcing Apple Card, and then since then, there's been a steady drum roll of a uh, number of tech providers coming up with different types of solutions, whether it be uh, you know, Google, Samsung, uh, and then from a different perspective, you know, Venmo, Square Cash, uh, SoFi, and of course, from a buy now, pay later perspective, Affirm, Klarna, Afterpay, et cetera. So consumers really face a plethora of choices uh, in terms of how to uh, engage with their issuers and even the definition of what an issuer is, is really changing because payment, issuing payment cards has really become democratized in this digital first world. And the interesting thing is, even prior to COVID, three out of 10 Americans would consider switching FIs for a better card app. This was a study that was done by payments.com earlier this year. And interestingly, this was the first time that consumers would consider card experience as a driver for primary financial relationship. And two out of three Americans, 55 or younger, would say that they would consider getting a payment card from a tech company. Among younger Americans, it's four out of five. And one of the most interesting studies in a Harris poll that was done, again, earlier this year, pre-COVID, was consumers are even willing to share data in order to get additional services. So clearly something's changing. Uh, and just to dig a little bit deeper into uh, some of the findings of the studies, this is from the payments.com uh, study, a better app would entice almost 30% of consumers to switch FIs. And the slides will be available after the session. When you look at it, it's actually quite broad based across uh, age groups, across income categories. And almost a quarter of consumers would be very or extremely likely to open accounts with large tech companies that offer better spend and money management features. Interestingly enough, younger and wealthier consumers are the most avid card app users. And in fact, those that are most sort of satisfied with their current digital solution are also the most likely to switch if they find an issuer that provides better value. So over 30% of bridge millennials, that's 30 to 40, who spend most on cards are willing to switch banks for premium card offering. And in fact, consumers earning more than $100,000 a year are 40% more likely to switch to tech giants. And interestingly enough, and this is really a, a wake up call, regional and community issuers are facing the greatest risk of losing customers who want better banking and card management solutions. So of course, a lot of this was, these are secular trends, but the specific study was done prior to COVID. And then of course, COVID hit. Market conditions in a post COVID world have just exacerbated the challenges and accentuated this drive to digital. So specifically, if you look at it from an issuer perspective, just a few key factoids uh, that I think just table stakes for, for the rest of the conversation here. First off, low interest rates are causing a downward pressure on net interest margin and non-interest expenses are up. And these are broad brushstroke comments. I'll get to specifics in just a little bit. And interestingly enough, mega banks and fintechs are capturing a bulk of the NIB deposit growth. If you look at the stats in terms of how the payment characteristics have changed. 
few key nuggets. First off, just in the past few months, spend has shifted significantly from credit to debit. And by the way, this is reminiscent of what happened in 2008 as well. And there is a direct correlation between debit spend and DDA deposits. Second, card present transactions are down about 20%, but e-commerce is up 40% year over year. And 25% of transactions today are e-commerce, representing a 66% year over year growth. And I think the single most important piece of data that we see from our own customer data is that card on file and digital wallet transactions for digital savvy issuers has grown up to 360%. While digital laggards have seen over a 50% drop in their transactions. And really the point is uh, card on file and wallet transactions and e-commerce card not present transactions have really exploded and therefore issuers need to ensure that they are able to offer effective solutions not only for enabling card on file, but actually driving their consumers to be able to put that card, their card on top of wallet. Because one study that has been you know, published for now quite some time is that for a digital top of wallet card that's used almost 100% of the time, while a physical top of wallet card might be used about 80% of the time. The last sort of key trend is that Mega banks and fintechs are seeing a disproportionate growth in accounts and quality deposits. So just a few factoids here. Square saw a 3x increase in deposits in April. Venmo added 8 million users. And in fact, Chime is now a top 10 FI. Digital banks across the board are gaining share. And of course, Apple, Samsung, SoFi, Google have all either launched or announced products. And another interesting, again, secular trend is Buy now, pay later is starting to gain serious currency with the mass market, siphoning transactions away from banks. So if you just look at how in the bottom right graph, new account opening imp was impacted, look at the growth in digital banks and look at the corresponding decline in community banks and credit unions and to a lesser extent in regional banks. So these are some stark trends that issuers have to contend with. So what are the key imperatives, both short-term and long-term? So our sense is immediate imperatives. Number one, protect and grow your non-interest bearing deposits and increase non-interest income by driving debit transaction volume. Second, reduce escalating operating cost of customer care, disputes and fraud via digital engagement. So digital is not just an expense item, it can actually impact uh, and become a profit center. Third, consumers have many, many choices that will de siphon deposits and transactions. So the key imperative, immediate imperative is to provide a sticky and convenient choice now. And the longer term imperatives are really, number one, to remain relevant in a digital first world against incursions by you know, fintechs, neobanks, tech giants, mega banks. I mean, even the definition of a bank is changing, right? So if you uh, talk to some of the tech giants, uh, their perspective would be to use banks as a stored value account and really take over the consumer relationship, which of course banks need to protect against. The second key point is attracting profitable customers via high transaction engagement and granular credit offerings with low default risk, like maybe hybrid buy now pay later card products. Third, transform the primary digital channel from being transactional to relational. So these are some sort of high level points now let's sort of talk about what needs to happen and we can take Apple card as kind of the moniker for what the new normal looks like. You know, Apple came out in 2019, announced the Apple card, which I think at least those in the industry and the broad consumer base would see pretty much redefine user expectations. So the spectacular initial experience, transparency and simplicity. Now there are 11,000 issuers issuing 1.5 billion credit and debit cards that must provide similar digital experiences to stay competitive. So what does that mean? Let's look at the voice of the consumer. And this is a result of both primary and secondary research. So consumers today in broad brushstrokes and what I've tried to do is distill the requirements of the consumer and then talk about what issuers need to do. Five key things. Number one, get a card quickly. So Apple provides a spectacular experience in under a minute 
I can sign up and become a customer. So banks and credit unions need to offer similar capabilities to offer a frictionless digital end-to-end -end onboarding in minutes. So get a card quickly and then start using it instantly. Again, going back to the comment about card on file, it's really critical as soon as that card is issued in that moment of instant gratification to be able to push it into the wallet as well as push it into key card on file merchants and recurring to maintain that stickiness. The third aspect is to be able to understand purchases and spend. So purchase clarity. Now I'm sure a lot of you look at your own, uh, you know, current banking solutions as, or as a consumer, you look at transaction details. Oftentimes it's just not clear. The merchant information might be garbled. You don't see the logo. You don't know exactly where you shop. So I think providing purchase clarity as it's kind of you see on the screen and I'll show you some additional screenshots as well. The fourth key point is to be able to manage by self-service, right? So whether it's a report loss stolen or a travel or a reset pin or request a credit, uh, uh, you know, credit limit increase, the basic point is empower consumers to do these common card management functions uh, right from the app. And the critical point here is engage in moments that matter. So as a consumer, here are the five key things I want to do. I want to get a card quickly, start using it instantly. When transactions happen, understand where the transaction happened and see the purchase clarity, be able to manage my cards, but most importantly, have the issuer engage with me in moments that matter. Now, this could be a moment of tension. Like I lost my card, the current card needs to be blocked, a new card needs to be issued. I need to be able to see all my card, where my card is uh, on card on file and recurring merchants. And I need to be able to transfer my preferences from the old card to the new card instantly. If I travel, of course, in a post COVID world, hopefully once things get normal, I travel, let's say I go abroad, as soon as I, let's say, go to UK, as I land in Heathrow, I get a notification that says, welcome to UK, would you like to use your card while you're here? You want us to create a virtual card, push that card into the wallet and enable the user to conduct transactions immediately without the user even having to initiate a travel notification. So engagement could be in moments of tension, they could be in moments of convenience, or it could just be a moment of delight. There's a meaningful offer for me, present it uh, to me, when and where it matters near that merchant where I am. So these are sort of the five key uh, underpinnings of any modern digital first card. Get a card quickly, use it instantly, understand purchase and spend, manage by self-service and engage. So the key point here is in addition to enabling digital capabilities for consumers, a modern digital first card also needs to have the right tools to the issuer to be able to analyze, administer, and deliver the capabilities. So for example, provide the set of usage and spend analytics, provide transaction research, in other words, transaction details, because what works for a consumer in terms of providing spend clarity also is beneficial to the issuer in terms of resolving disputes and lowering fraud. Mass enroll customers so that you can start driving uh, higher digital adoption for card centric solutions or card centric experiences and enable the digital account opening. And as we already mentioned, critically support card on file and lifecycle management. So what we do at OnDot is really bring this to life. We enable banks and credit unions of all sizes to deliver these modern digital experiences, the five key tenets, get, use, understand, manage, and engage for existing credit and debit cards on existing processor infrastructure and rails. We are pretty much integrated into all the processors like FIS and WorldPay and Fiserv and First Data, Thesis, Jack Henry, PSEU, Co-op, and so on. And therefore, leveraging their APIs as well as the real-time integration, we are able to bring a solution in a matter of weeks that realizes the capabilities that I just talked about and hence enable issuers to deliver an Apple card like solution to their consumers. So in the remaining, you know, two, three minutes, I'll just show you a few screenshots just to illustrate the concept, right? So what do these digital first capabilities look like? 
So first off, new account opening. This could be a new to bank user. So first time user with digital account opening, or it could be a cross sell to an existing bank customer, or it could be adding a card to an existing account. So as an example, you know, this is back to school time. You're not going to give your kids cash anymore, or I suppose uh, just for purposes of hygiene, it would be good to issue a, a, a card, a digital card, send it to your child so that it can be uh, uh, pushed into your child's wallet and your dependent can start using the card, right? So it could be a new to bank user or a cross sell to an existing bank customer or adding a card to an existing account. And we can do this in a matter of minutes. Second, once that card is created, push it into your wallet, whether it be an Apple Pay or a Google Pay, so on, basically into the device wallet. And then show enriched transactions. And this is what I mean. I just wanted to bring this to life. So this could be sort of the unenriched raw information. You can see the enriched information. And this is the kind of transaction detail that you see. And these are actionable, right? So you can go look at hours of operation, website, you know, can call the merchant, uh, see the logo, so on and so forth. The next key point is really to be able to see card on file and record. So on a card, you can see all the places where I've given this card for recurring payments and card on file. As you can imagine, this is not only helpful in the context of spend insight, it's particularly helpful if you have a lost stolen scenario. So the next key aspect is to be able to show spend insight. You can show it by what, where I spent, when, what is the trajectory of my spending, uh, sorry, what I spent it on, trajectory of my spending or trend of my spending over time, and actually where I spent geographically. So the next aspect is really, so we talked about the get, use, understand. So just to sort of conclude this, the manage capabilities, I'll give you a couple of instances. So one is to be able to control my cards, right? So to be able to turn a card on and off, to say the card can only be used around me, to set some transaction limits, merchant categories, so on and so forth. And some specific use cases, as I already alluded to this, in terms of, let's say, you know, report a card lost or stolen. That's a fulfilled journey. It's not just a feature in the app. To be able to pay off my cre credit, in case it's a credit card, or pay off, uh, either make one-time payments or recurring payments, and then to be able to set alerts. And these are meaningful, interactive alerts. And finally, just to bring this to closure, to also be able to look at my credit wellness, right? So to summarize, what we offer is this notion of what a modern digital experience needs to be. And the critical point here is, you know, to some extent, none of this is an epiphany. I think you all know that this is what a modern uh, card solution needs to offer. The value here is that OnDot is able to bring this in a matter of weeks and allow you to create a branded card experience that you can launch in market.